attentively uh, listen to what is being taught to you okay all right okay so today we will study a topic called block ciphers and the way we can use this block cipher that's called mode of operation these are the references uh, this is the youtube video by professor par is one of the very good lectures so please go through it if you want to get into details these are the contents we'll come to this one by one okay and i will be a little fast today because we need to cover all these topics uh, it's all available in uh, the book uh, all these topics so please go through these topics by yourself right in detail if you don't understand anything or please ask questions okay all right so where are we in the course we have completed all topics security basic security we have completed all topics CIA. can you please mute yourself okay all right okay and then we have looked at access control mechanisms password etc and then we started cryptography and here we are okay we have completed a one time pad block cipher des aes which we did in last class so we are here in the block cipher okay we are in basically we are in the cryptography then there are two types of ciphers symmetric cipher and asymmetric cipher or symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption okay uh, and then in symmetric encryption we are into block ciphers and we'll touch upon stm ciphers later okay all right this is another view of the same thing so today we'll study block ciphers okay so there are so these are the things that we'll study modes of operation introduction and there are various modes we will cover only few of these previous class we studied aes okay this is a block cipher mode of encryption okay and we have looked at internal structure of aes like this this for encryption and the other one is for decryption okay and it has block cipher means that it takes as an input a block of certain size so here we have defined a block of size 128 for aes okay and output is exactly of the same size 128 bits and there is a <coughs> we can use various keys <coughs> sorry 128 192 or 256 bits okay all right <coughs> now what is the challenge here Note that this is all deterministic, right? Yeah. All right. So when you say deterministic, what do you mean by that? Anyone? We discuss this point, right? What do you mean by deterministic? It is not IND CPU secure. Yeah, that is good, very good, but that's I and uh, that's fine. But determinism is what? Given one input, say you give input A, B, C, D something which is 128 bits and it encrypted into x y z whatever uh, 128 bits given and this uses encryption aes for example and 128 bit key which is constant which is same you do it second time it exactly results into same thing 
Every time exactly results into the same thing, right? So this is a so it means that this AES block algorithm is deterministic. That if it's not deterministic, you cannot decrypt it. Okay, now at a block level, it has to be deterministic. Okay, all right. So that's the and determinism. We have seen that leak some information. If you repeat this block multiple times, of you have you have an image that is of course one twenty eight bit is very small. If this image uh, you you know the, the in image in general you see the data changes very slowly. Okay, already you must have seen MPEG or JPEG etc etc. When compressed is very small because. You know the changes is not many, right? So now, if you use the same determinism to encode every 128 bit block in the image, then you we are leaking some information. All right. Okay. All right. So now we will say, how do we combine these individual blocks to in in intelligent way such that there is little bit of randomness and also we can take message which is larger than block size or 128 bits, right? So then we call this a mode of operation. So the first sentence that we just, we don't just turn the block cipher of its own. In the most of the algorithm that you see, even you go to SSL library, and try to see what is uh, uh, AES algorithm, it will say it will not use just 128 bits because your message, your email, for example, when you're sending, you cannot say that okay, my message has got to be only 128 bits, right? It obviously can be longer or smaller, mostly it's longer. Okay, so now if we have more than 128 bits, then how do we use these blocks? Okay, all right. So combining, so he, so basically, it means that combining block ciphers as a core of larger function. It's ways of connecting block ciphers to encrypt larger than the block size and to introduce some randomness. And we have seen that AES by itself is not practical, IND, CPS secure. All right. Okay. So if we send same message twice, the cipher text in two transmission will be the same as AES because they're deterministic, right? So take 128 bits of image, second 128 bit of image. Okay, both will result into similar output and that is actually leaking information. How does it leak? Let's look at the simple example, right? Now this is the image, this shows the company's uh, business projection. Okay, is uncompressed bitmap file. This is a bitmap file, right? You you understand concept of file and bitmap. Okay, and you, you know, in a file in general, uh, you when you study file data structure, you'll see that the top of this is something about file, metadata. And then this is a data, right? So just don't, so what do you look at this part only, okay, and encrypt this using AES block, simple block, block by block you encrypt it. And what you get is that this image. Is it leaking some info? Yes, it is leaking information, right? You can still see what company's projection, right? Okay, so now to handle this, we have mode of operations. Okay, now let's look at uh, handle the first problem first, right? So let's look at longer than 128 bits message and let's take block cipher encryption. It could be AES or DES. Let's assume it's AES or it could be DES or any other, right? So, all right, let's take here AES is 128 bit message here. This is 128 bit. Output is also 128 bit. And key size is also 128 bit. Okay. All right. 
all right now how do you know if the original message is larger than 128 what do you do then you use multiple blocks right so you put have another block that is use a es twice okay this is the first 128 bit message and this is another 128 bit message all right very simple but note that we are using the same key because for a message we are going to use the same key right you cannot generate different keys for different parts of message all right got it now what's the issue now the issue is that as we have seen earlier it may leak some information now we will have to see that how do we interconnect these blocks okay so now we'll look at how do we interconnect these blocks one way is that simply take this text input text so this one concatenated with the second one is input text split into two and then generate cipher text and combine these two or concatenate these two okay but we have seen this can this will leak information okay so now we'll have to come out with different ways of interconnecting these blocks identical all identical okay and that's what we call that mode operation how do we intelligently we can do this so there are various ways of doing it like ecb electronic code book cipher block chaining just cbc then propagating cbc cipher feedback output feedback and counter right so we'll not go into each one of these if you are interested you can uh, go through many most of these but we'll look at only ecb cbc and ctr cbc is very popular and also is ctr okay so let's look at the first electronic code book uh, mode of operation is called ecb mode just remember ecb mode okay all right so this is how it is now let's now here let's assume that plain text is of size n bit instead of 128 we are not now bothered about aes or des or something else so we'll say that block size is 120 uh, instead of 128 bits n bits output is also n bits okay and then we are considering here m number of blocks small m number of blocks right okay so we have uh, this is first block second block and this is mth block okay so then encryption of and the key is k message is m okay so m is broken into n bit blocks and number of blocks is m okay all right and we just do what we do is that we uh, so encryption of message m using k key is nothing but take cipher text c1 c2 c3 and concatenate this this is simplest way okay and uh, we call this ecb mode as we discussed earlier right earlier one we okay so use the same key break the message m into m number of blocks and each block if size m whatever depending on whatever block cipher you are using whether you're using aes or ds value of n can change okay now this is obviously not ind cpa secure when we have discussed the reason because it's a deterministic all right so ecb mode is very simple mode wherein you just break the message into number of blocks encrypt this using each block encrypt this using same key and output whatever output you get you concatenate that right so it ecb mode is flawed because it leaks information we know that right uh, all right so this is if this is the original image 
okay obviously you create multiple blocks of whatever uh, size n and encrypt that all these blocks up to this right and then what you get is this one okay so it leaks information any question All right, so let's move ahead then, okay? Now, I mean, see, we, we, will, we have studied the password, right? In case of passwords, we store password in hashed form in the server. And cryptographic hashing will study later. But, you know, uh, company like Adobe thought, you know, it's a good idea to encrypt the passwords. And they use ECB mode, 3DES ECB mode. Uh, the DES, they have used DES and ECB mode. Okay, and that has leaked a lot of information, right? So 153 million account passwords have been leaked in 2013, just 10 years back. So it's not a good idea to encrypt the passwords, it's a good idea to hash the password. And you'll have to think through why. Okay, note that hash function is known to everyone. Okay, now here encryption key, key is a secret. It may not be known to everyone. So now I may ask this question to you that why hashing is more secure than encrypting? and think through that and I may ask this question in the exam. Okay, now we have seen ECB is, does not work properly because it leaks information, right? Okay, so how can we uh, bring little bit of randomness and, and let it also be whole scheme be deterministic in nature? So individual block can be deterministic so overall, we can say it's deterministic, but in between these blocks, we can bring a little bit of randomness in the sense that if the block here and the block there is same, then output, this output, ciphertext here and ciphertext must differ. We can bring this in and it should be same, deterministic, right? When, because we can, when we, when we decrypt, we we'll, should get the original message back, okay? So we'll have to bring in some randomness in intelligent way, right? So how, we, now then, if we do this, then we come up with next scheme, which is called CBC, Cypher Block Chaining Mode. Okay, so this is most popular mode for commercial applications. Only thing we do is that we in, introduce initial randomness, that we call it IV, okay? Okay, we'll look at this, right? So, so create a initial vector, which is a random number or random n bit string. And note that n is a also block size. So same as block size, you create a the generate random n bit string. And we'll see how do we generate random numbers. Uh, later on the course when we'll study pseudo random number generator. Okay, so we define something called C0 as initial vector, which is nothing but n bit string, which is randomly generated. And we call this nouns. If you have studied architecture, you'll say nouns is nothing but use one time unique value. So, so basically we can use nouns only once. All right, okay. So now we do, what we do, we generated this initial vector IV, which is of size n bits. Okay. Note that this IV is used only once because the nonce. Okay. So if this is a message M and you encrypt this using CBC, then you generate this initialization vector, IV. 
Now, second time you do this, oh, you have used message, one encryption message, and it's gone. Okay, the second time you have to encrypt the same message, then your IV will be different. Now the question comes to your mind, then how you are going to decrypt this using the key alone? Is that the question that comes to your mind? You cannot do it. You will have to also send IV. So, we will look at this. Okay. All right. So, let me just clean this up and restart. Okay. Okay. So, we have added initial initialization vector IV. And then you have brought in randomness here, but all other blocks you are not brought in any randomness. They are still deterministic. So, what we do is that the output of the first one, the, the first ciphertext that we have generated, this is ciphertext. The output of the first block cipher encryption that's here, which is nothing but ciphertext, okay, uh, we call it C1. We are using as an input here in the second block and is XORing with the plain text here. Okay, and then whatever is the output, we use the same key because th these keys are the same. And we encrypt this using same key and then output uh, is generated. This will call it C2. And then what? We have to bring in randomness here. So we connect this one. The output here that is uh, C2 goes and input here and XORing with this plain text and so on. Right? Any question? Okay, all right. So now the final ciphertext is what? Now, until this IV is known for decrypting, you cannot decrypt it because you have to do the reverse function. Okay, so now you have to also send along with ciphertext. Suppose the image you have encrypted, then along with that, what IV you have used, that also you'll have to send along with C1, C2, C3. So now Eve in between, can see IV? Right? But looking at the image, Eve cannot find out anything. And since Eve does not know the key, then she cannot decrypt anything. Okay? Any question? Please listen carefully and if you don't understand anything, please let me know because there will be multiple questions I will ask from these mode of operations, okay? And more than that, you should understand this. It's not, exam is not the only thing that you need to worry about, okay? All right. Let's move ahead then, okay? So now this is how CBC works, right? And you can go through all this by yourself. Split them into a, a plain text of P1 to PM. And these are M number of blocks. And what you get is uh, you use initialization vector in the beginning, okay? Exclusive or it, you get ciphertext, and then you use the key, and then you get C1, okay? We call this initialization vector is C0 is equal to IV. Okay, at the end you send this to Alice. That's it. Okay. How do we do decryption? This was encryption here. This is the decryption, right? Okay. So you take ciphertext. Okay, use a key to decrypt it and use an X whatever the output here you exclusive or with the IV initialization vector because initialization vector is also sent to Bob or the person who is decrypting it, right? So you get plain text. Okay. And then you take this ciphertext 
and then exclusive or here take this is say p1 this is p2 this is p3 okay and this is uh, i'm sorry this is so sorry c1 c2 c3 what you get here is p1 p2 p3 okay all you do here in second one is that use this c1 and uh, cipher, you know whatever the output of this block cipher you exclusive or it and you get this one okay it's just reverse of this okay all right so any question hello No, all right. So this is the operation that we do. Please go through it. It's a very simple XOR property. So now, if we take this image and encrypt this using, we will get the one something here. Can you see some something? Is it leaking some information? Yes, it is leaking some information, right? And you can see some something like this here okay now because similar plain text blocks produce similar text uh, cipher text which is not good and cbc mode we are using internal uh, randomness we are using randomness using iv and then output of first block which is also random in nature because we have introduced randomness in first one so output will be also random and using this input to second block apart from the cipher text right so we get this kind of output which does not leak information right okay now do you notice something now if you have to implement this okay this is encryption so do you think this can be parallelized it means that this can run in one processor, this in the second, this in third processor. In one time instant, you can finish this or one cycle or whatever. Can you parallelize this? I need answer. Yes or no? What is it sequential? Sir, it is like more sequential, but we yes. can break it. Uh, we can break the like we have suppose n bits, so we can break n uh -huh. bits and then do ZOR in parallel cores for each of them. No, 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 no. I mean, look at go to AES design and you can see you can't break n bits. N bit goes a best concept of block. Blocks cannot be broken. So your first answer is correct. This is sequential in nature. Because until this encryption is complete, this output is not available, which you are using as input for the second block, right? Okay, and until this encryption is here complete, you cannot take the output, right? So you'll have to wait until this encryption is complete, then second block encryption is complete and so on. So basically it will take longer time. Now look at this one. Decryption, can it be, can this be parallelized? Note that this cipher text are all available, right? What is available to Bob? IV, then C1, C2, C3. This all available? And what is getting is P1, P2, P3. Can this be parallelized? Look at go one by one. Now you get the answer. Go over here. At time t one, you are doing this. So what is what do you need? You need the key that's available. You need IV which is available because you got IV in the beginning. You got C one, right? So all you need is C one IV and the key. Key has been given by Alice to Bob. So key is available. So what you get is this one, right? 
first instant time same time instant t1 what do you need for decryption you need ciphertext which is available right in the beginning you need key that's available in the beginning you also need what this one this ciphertext is also available because right in the beginning alice has sent to bob's iv c1 c2 c3 so this also available c2 is anyway available c1 is also available and so on right so it means that yes we can parallelize decryption okay go through this again uh, after the class and then you will understanding all right so they said advantage is that decryption can be parallelized but disadvantage is that encryption cannot be parallelized if it's a very long message then you have to do it sequentially it may take time okay now we didn't answer this question if we have always assumed that message m will be a kind of m into n okay n is a block size 128 bits for example m is number of blocks so it has a multiple of the block size right what happens you cannot say i am going to write email which is multiple of 128 bits is impractical right so message can be longer than 128 bits or longer than multiple of 128 bits then we have a scheme called padding it means that you'll have to make it multiple of 128 bits and then take and do it intelligently so that we can recover our message back okay all right so now what we do is we do padding okay we do we pad the message until it's a multiple of the block size. Okay, you when you study computer networks, you will also study concepts of padding there as well. Okay, Ethernet ca message cannot be smaller than certain size. Then we will have to pad it. Okay, so padding is nothing but adding dummy bytes at the end of message until it is of proper length, which is multiple of block size. All right, and then at when this message is received, then we'll have to remove the padding. Clear? So that we get the original message. So way of doing padding is that we cannot pad it with zeros and ones because you will not never know. You know where the message is ending. Okay, then we have to devise some method. For example, this is a message which is uh, thirteen bytes long each is using one byte you know like zero is coded with one byte and so on so forth note that these are not these are not uh, binary number these are hexadecimal number or maybe using eight bits for eight bits right so two raised for eight characters can come here so this may will be 13 then one two three four five six yeah it's 13 so this is 13 and each character here is represented with 8 bits. Now we are simply for simplicity we are showing zeros but it could be anything. Okay. Now algorithm needs 16 byte message because last block also has got to be 128 bits. Then we need to pad here something and it should be intelligent enough. It should be good enough so that we can recover the message back right. So what we do is that we see that this is short by three bytes, right? We need 16 bytes, which is 128 bits in last pad, last block. And now we have 13 bytes. So we are short by three. So we pad it with three, three, three. Had it been four bytes short, then we would have padded it with four, 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 four. And so on, right? So this is a very simple way. Okay, all right. So please go through it. This is given in detail in the book so please uh, go through it uh, so this is a method given we will not go into it and this method of padding is called pkcs7 all right any question shall we recap what we have done 
Okay, we'll do it at the end. Now, what do we achieve out of this, right? We have brought in some randomness. We have brought in some randomness because of what? Because of initial vector that we are using. And this IV is randomly generated for each encryption. Same message you send twice, then every time you will use different IV. Because an IV you send to other party along with uh, uh, encrypted mess, encrypted block output, right? Or blocks output, whatever, C1, C2, whatever. So, all right, so this is first randomness we have generated. Then for each block, we take the output and then give this input to other block. So that also uh, causes, that also brings in some randomness. Now the question is that if you reuse IV, because generation of, we'll, we'll study that, this is random number, right? Random number of size n bits. Is it available for free? How can you generate random number? Or each encryption, is it free? How do you generate actually? In computer, everything is deterministic. You write an algorithm, you know, to generate a number, every time it will be the same. Output will be the same. So how do you bring in randomness to something? Did you think about it? Is it easy problem? Okay, so generation of IV or random number is not easy. And we'll study how we can generate pseudo random number, which are actually not 100% random, but it behaves like a random number. Okay, all right. Now we see that if we reuse the IV, then it becomes deterministic. So there is no IND CPS security. For example, in this case, we use, take two messages, P1, P2, P3. First is three blocks, P1, P2, P3. Second is three blocks, P1, P2, P4. Only third block is differing, right? Okay. What this, what it says that when IV is reused, CBC reveals when two messages start with the same plain text blocks. Okay, so output of this for these two blocks, if you use same IV, will be the similar, and that will reveal information. Okay, so take this example. Of course, not connected with this one. Uh, take uh, input as a penguin, and then output with CBC is this one with random IVs. Of course, for this one, when you are encrypting for the first time, use one IV, some n bits, whatever. Okay. Second time you are doing, then this IV will change. All right. There's a message. Okay. All right. Okay. So e ECB and CBC uh, mode summary. Uh, ECB is deterministic, not IND CPS secure. CBC is IND CPS secure provided. IV is generated every time fresh or no reuse of that. Encryption in CBC mode is non parallelizable while decryption is parallelizable. And then, of course, we need padding. Okay, now based on that, now still we have some inefficiencies, right? The inefficiency is that encryption is not parallelizable. So it's slow algorithm. All this use heavily, right? Okay. So in many applications that does not require so much of speed, ECB works fine. Uh, sorry, CBC works fine. Now let's look at, let's come to the third scheme. And of course there are many such schemes and we are studying only three. Now we have studied one time pad. They are secure because they don't reuse the key. Okay, every time key is generated afresh, and then uh, that key is sent to other party. Now, since key is changing, then obviously it has got to be IND CPS secure that we have studied, right? 
Now, can we use this concept in encryption? Okay, but note that if you reuse, if you generate key for every block, new key, it's a pain. Okay, first thing is that you have to generate it. You have to generate it. There's a cost of generation and then you'll have to send it for every block and message is say very long, then it's not really realistic scheme, right? So we have seen, but we'll have to use now intelligently this concept of OTP, all right? Now this attack, okay. Okay, this input, this output block, and this is the key. And the key is generated every time a fresh, so output will look random, right? Okay, if at the attacker doesn't know the key, all this output looks random. So this key will be different from this key will be different from third key. Okay, all right. Okay. Now idea is that use this random looking output as one time pad. Okay, all right. So, okay, so what we can do now, you take this something, okay, which is random, and then encrypt this using key, and then XOR with the plain text. So it, okay, so these are all random ones, right? So basically what I will repeat, take this something random looking thing. Okay. Now note that the condition is that we want to keep the same key. You know, for the whole message, M, the key has to be the same. Yet we want to use OTP concept. Okay. Then we say, all right, let's try this way that we'll generate something which looks random, which is random, okay? And then use this for encryption, this is input, and use a key, whatever common key we have for message, or different blocks, use this for encryption, and output this with a plain text, and we get ciphertext here. Now the question is, what is this then? Okay, so now we say that here we use a nonce, Generate one random number and then have a attached to this or concurrent with this a counter. Okay, now how to bring then randomness here? Now for every block you cannot have nonce because nonce also have to be communicated to other end for decryption. So what we use do is that we use the same nonce, but change the counter value here. Instead of zero, zero, we'll have zero, one, and so on. Use the same nonce, but counter value changes. Okay, use this input, which is nonce and counter value, because this gives randomness, and this becomes input for this block encryption. Note that this is not input for overall encryption, right? This only for, because just to bring randomness, use this as input, and whatever be the output using the key, assuming we are using AES, for example, here, then this is the actual input, your plain text, okay? For AES, for example, look at this way, this overall scheme, then this input is plain text, which is divided into, number of blocks, okay, and this is the output, okay, the input is the key and also nonce, okay, so this is the big picture, so now this plain text is nothing but something that's here, this is actual input, this is the input here to the block, block server is just to create randomness, you understand it? Any question? Okay, all right. So now we here we are. We are here in CTR mode now. Okay. 
ये ऑल दिस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द व्हाट इज द आउटपुट देन दैट और इनक्रिप्टेड मैसेज दैट हैज गॉट टू बी सेंड फ्रॉम एलिस टू बॉब नाउ एलिस इज डूइंग ऑल दिस एंड बॉब विल रिसीव दिस बॉब शुड गेट दिस नॉन्स एंड अलोंग विथ सो बॉब विल गेट नॉन्स और एलिस विल सेंड नॉन्स सी वन सी टू सी एम ऑल राइट That's all. Bob will receive as a cipher text. Okay, but in between, and of course, the key has already been transmitted from Alice to Bob. Okay, so that's it. So what's the advantage of this? The decryption is very similar. It's just opposite of this. You take uh, same nonce. Same counter value, counter. You know where counter starts from. Generate this, and then use the key and block cipher encryption. Output is XOR with cipher key, and you get plain text and so on and so forth. Note that in order to decrypt, we are using encryption here. It's just mathematics. Uh, you know, just look at it. You'll get the answer. is simple okay so output is of course non c1 c2 cm now what do you see here what is the beauty encryption let's look at the encryption huh? we'll just spend some time and then close this encryption can we parallelize it Okay, in order to parallelize this block, for example, first this is at time t zero. Nonce is known, is is available to Bob. Counter value is known to Bob. Key is known to Bob. Okay. I am so sorry and to Alice. <laughs> I am so sorry. So we are encrypting. Nonce, anyway, Bob Alice has generated. Counter is known. Key is known. Alice has generated the key, and the plain text is known. So you, this can be done in T zero. How about same time instant? Can we do this? Second block, nonce is known. Counter value is known because just increment it by one. Key is known. Plain text is known. So you can do this, right? Now randomness is coming here because generation of nonce and the changing counter value. You are not using feedback loop here between one block to another. Is automatically coming because of this. All right. So this can be parallelized. Okay. All right. Now look at decryption. Can decryption be parallelized? Anyone? Okay, this is at Bob sent, right? What Bob has received? Bob has received nones. Then Bob has received C one, C two, C three, C three up to C M. In this example, we assume only three. Okay, so Bob at time t zero or whatever. Uh, will nonce value is known because it's a received right in the beginning counter he knows where counter must start with key is already been transmitted to bob he has received a cipher text c1 okay this is c1 exclusive or it get plain text how about this this one nonce is known counter is known key is known cipher text c2 is known is available so you can do it and so on so forth right so now we can see encryption can be parallelized and decryption can also be parallelized okay and this thing you must study by yourself we don't need padding here why you can simply cut off the part of xor that are longer than the message 
Okay. All right. So please go through this. Try to understand why this is so. All right. So we'll have to close it. So now CTR mode security and uses. CTR is INDCPS secure, provided we don't use nonce more than once. And nonce must be randomly generated and never reused. If we reuse the nonce, then we leak the information. Okay. So now we have seen that it can be parallelized, right? Both uh, encryption and decryption. And now we see that we have a key stream in CTR mode that can be calculated in parallel during encryption. Okay. All right. So CTR mode is used in secure real time transport protocol or SRTP. All right. So that's all. So we can use this in voice over IP application, like the application we are using now. Kind of voice over IP, right? Like the data and message here is, or voice or data is going over, or video is going over IP. Any question? Okay. Okay, all right. So if we are using CTR mode, this is the original message, then what we get is this one. Of course, IV has to be generated every time. And uh, you know, and we don't have to reuse IVs. All right. So if you now comparing modes of operation, another two minutes, then which mode is better if you need high performance CTR mode is better. Now, if you're paranoid about security, which mode is better CBC mode is better. Why? You'll have to think through. Okay. So CBC and CTR in general, theoretically they are equally secure if used properly. However, if improperly IV is reused, then CBC only leaks partial information and CTR totally fails. So that's the reason if you are really paranoid about security and you think that IV is being leaked or reused because generation of IV also requires little bit of work or there's a cost, right? So, so that's the reason CBC, they will prefer CBC or otherwise CTR is more efficient because everything can be done in parallel, okay? Now note that this method block ciphers, this method is only designed for confidential key. It does not give us integrity or authenticity, which and the methods we will study later. Okay, all right, any question? Yes. 